everybody, it's Miss Hamill and I'm here to talk to you about biomes. So biomes are going to be ecosystems throughout the world that have or share similar characteristics. And this lecture is going to be divided into two parts. The par first part, which we'll be discussing in this video, is land biomes or terrestrial biomes. In the second video, we will discuss aquatic biomes. So what is a biome? As I said, it is going to describe areas on the earth with similar climate, plants, and animals. Um, so they'll have similar abiotic factors such as climate, um, precipitation, temperature, and then also the biotic factors, plants and animals. And they can also almost always be found in a similar latitude. So you can see the different colors are found in a similar area. Okay, so land biomes are going to largely be determined by temperature and rainfall. So if you look at this, oops, if you look at this graph here, we have precipitation on the bottom, mean precipitation, and then we have the mean temperature. So areas that are dry, they don't get very much rain, but they're quite warm, are going to be classified as deserts and areas that are quite warm but get lots of rain are going to be classified as tropical rainforests. So we're going to talk about each of these biomes and basically what characterizes them and it's largely based off of this graph. So the first one is the Arctic tundra and the Arctic tundra is found in the Arctic so high latitudes in the northern hemisphere. The precipitation is going to be typically dry Temperature, it will be cold year-round. Uh, characteristics are permafrost, so this is going to be frozen soil, uh, lichens, mosses, migrating animals, and resident herbivores. So you can think of uh, northern Canada and um, Russia whenever you think about the Arctic tundra. So this is going to be the coldest biome and cover about one-fifth of the Earth's surface. Next we have the alpine tundra. This is also a cold area, cold biome, and its distribution is high elevation at all latitudes. It's going to be dry and cold year round. Um, there will be similar characteristics, so permafrost, lichens, mosses, grass, migrating animals, and resident herbivores. So because it's so cold, it doesn't have extremely high biodiversity, but there are plants and animals that live in this region. Okay, next we have our coniferous forest. Um, this is also called the taiga. And this distribution is high latitude and it's in the northern hemisphere. It has adequate to dry um, precipitation, so it can rain quite heavily, but it also can be dry. Um, its temperature is cool, cooler year-round. And characteristics, there are con conifers, and this is going to be pine trees. And it's very diverse in animals, um, plants, um, birds, mammals, insects, so many different types of animals as well. So a higher diversity than the tundras. Now you can think of Washington State whenever you think of the con conifers forest. Then we have our temperate deciduous forest and this looks like home to me. This looks like Pittsburgh in the fall and the distribution is going to be mid-latitude in the northern hemisphere. So the precipitation is going to be adequate. There will be a lot of summer rain um, and winter snow. So there's a decent amount of precipitation in this area, in this biome. The temperature is moderate, so it can be warm in the summer and cool in the winter. And the characteristics are many different types of animals, insects, birds, uh, mammals, and they have deciduous trees and these trees are going to be the trees that are green during the spring and summer. They change color in the fall, so they're absorbing their chlorophyll, and then the leaves fall in the winter and then they bloom again in the spring. And there's very fertile soil in this area. Okay, our temperate grassland is going to be like our Midwestern United States. You can think of Kansas. And the distribution is going to be mid-latitudes in the mid-continents. The precipitation is going to be seasonal, so there'll be a dry season as well as a wet season. 
and the temperature is cold winters and hot summers. The characteristics is the grass, so they're prairie grasses um, that are fire adapted and drought tolerant plants. So in case there is a drought and there's long periods of time without water, these plants can survive. Um, many herbivores, so many organisms that are going to eat these grasses, and then the soil is going to be deep and fertile to hold the grasses in place. Then we have our desert, so the distribution is going to be 30 degrees north and south latitude band, so if you look on a map, you can see deserts pretty much around the same area, the same latitude band on the map, so around the earth. And the precipitation, there's almost none. Typically, it's less than 10 inches per year. In other, most deserts, it's even less than that. And temperature is variable, so it's um, it varies daily and seasonally. So it can be very hot in the day um, or for a whole entire season, and then cold at night or cold for an entire season. So characteristics are sparse vegetation, so there's few plants and few animals in this region, um, in this biome. There are cacti, succulents, and these plants and animals have to be drought tolerant, so they have to be adapted to living with very little water and, the, of course, high heat. So there are reptiles, um, insects, some rodents, and birds that are found in this area and all these organisms are adapted to their environment. Next we have our chaparral and our chaparral is going to be like the Hollywood Hills in California. Um, the distribution is going to be coastal mid-latitude and the precipitation is seasonal so dry in the summer and rainy in the winter. Temperature is going to be hot in the summer and cool in the winter and then the vegetation is going to be short shrubby bushes and um, drought adapted plants um, and of course there are some plants or some animals in this area as well. Next is our savanna and this is going to be found at the equator typically in Africa and the precipitation is seasonal so there is a dry season and a wet season and the organisms living in this region are adapted to that dry and wet season. Now the temperature is always warm and the characteristics are plants that are fire adapted and drought tolerant and there are many herbivores living in this region and the soil is quite fertile. So this is where um, you will see zebra, giraffe, elephants, so grazing animals in the African savanna. Next is the tropical rainforest and this is also found at the equator um, and this area is very wet always and the temperature is always warm and its characteristics are many many plants and many animals and thin soil so the tropical rainforest is going to be our most diverse or biodiverse region um, or land biome so there are many different plants and animals living within the same community within the same region which makes it biodiverse so that's just a little bit about our tropical biomes, or I'm sorry, not our tropical biomes, our biomes in general. And we are going to talk about the aquatic biomes in the next video. But what I want you to remember is that these biomes all share similar characteristics. So a tropical rainforest found in Costa Rica will share similar characteristics to one in Australia. They will have very wet um, climate, there will be very warm, and they'll have very many plants and animals living in the region, which defines it as a tropical rainforest. Okay, so stick, stay tuned for our next video on aquatic biomes.